Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you, Richard. Um, let me start by saying how wonderful it is to see so many of you here today in this stunning venue. I must confess that when we, um, we first got recommended this beautiful place, um, I was slightly worried that on a, a busy Tuesday afternoon when a, uh, it's the beginning of the Easter holidays, we'd struggle to fill this. Um, and in fact, we've ended up with a, a waiting list of hundreds of people who wanted to be here that couldn't be and, uh, and people queuing outside. So um, really quite overwhelming in terms of the support it's had. And to hear that the website's being inundated today is a, is a, is a, you know, a tribute to, I think, the fact that we've tapped into something that means something to people today. Um, Richard talked a little bit about, you know, why do we need this? You know, we've been getting richer but no happier. Um, and indeed, what the core idea is for Action for Happiness. What I'd like to do is sort of take that a stage further and talk about what we can do practically. What does this mean in people's lives? Um, but before I, I go any further with that, um, I'd just like to say a word about the word itself, happiness. Um, Sean raised at the beginning a question that often comes up from the viewers, in that case, of BBC Breakfast. Um, but, you know, I think the, in our modern consumer culture, happiness has been slightly twisted in terms of what it means to people. There's a sense that happiness is somehow about a short-term hit of pleasure. It's about self-seeking. It's, um, it's about focus on the self. And actually, that's not right. I think what, what we mean by happiness, and I think what happiness means, is a sense of life going well when you take everything into account. So that includes our feelings about our past. It includes our hopes for the future. It includes every different aspect of our life. So... Pursuing the idea of a happier society is actually really about just prioritising the things that matter most. And at the moment, I don't think that's what we've been doing. Um, there are, of course, other words people use to describe this concept. People talk about well-being, they talk about flourishing. These are hugely important terms. But they don't tend to be the words people use every day on the street, in the pub, when they talk to their friends and so on. And so for me, what's crucial is when you ask parents in particular what do they most want for their children, they say, I just want them to be happy. That's the most common answer. And certainly something I can very much relate to with my wife, Kate, and I having just had our third little one a few weeks ago, Harry. So... Um, uh, my my, my short-term happiness has been hit in terms of sleep, but the, the kind of long-term boost to fulfilment you get from having a, having a child is, is wonderful. And that's so often the case, actually. Many of the things that really bring happiness in the long term aren't necessarily easy in the short term, like, for example, trying to organise a, a launch event for a, a new movement, just as one recent example. Um, uh, I need a clicker to actually move on. Where's my clicker? There we go. Let's, let's try and see if we can go somewhere with this. There we go. So... Action is another part of it. We've talked about happiness. Action is in many ways a more important word than happiness in the context of, of what we're doing here. Um, and, you know, people often say, isn't this a little bit pointless? Can we actually affect our happiness? Isn't it set in stone by our genes? Um, are we powerless? And I think what the evidence shows, and Richard talked about this scientific evidence, is that's absolutely not the case, actually. Uh, Martin Seligman and his colleagues in the United States have shown um, that although our genes and our external circumstances, of course, have an impact on how we feel about our lives, a very significant proportion of the difference in happiness between people comes from our conscious choices, the things we choose to do, the things that we spend our energy on, um, so we can affect our own happiness. And that's a really hopeful, empowering message. Uh, but still, that in its own right won't necessarily create a happier society. Surely we need people in the positions of power to do something. And of course that's right too. We need policymakers to set the framework. We need business leaders. We need other people with positions of power to, of course, care about the people whose lives they influence. But actually, more, more empowering than that still is the fact that we each actually almost whether we like it or not, affect the happiness of those around us. This fascinating picture is actually the results of a study done uh, over many years looking at a connected group of people uh, and their levels of happiness and their, and their interconnection. And uh, the colours, I think, represent how happy they are and there's some interesting clustering around groups of happy and unhappy people. But the, the, for me, the most exciting finding out of this is the, the contagious nature of happiness. So not only do we affect the happiness of the people around us, the people we know, but we affect our friends' friends and indeed even our friends' friends' friends. So actually the way we approach our lives doesn't just affect how happy we are, it has ripple effects. So doing a good deed by being positive, by being constructive, helpful, kind, these things you know, these things spread through these amazingly powerful social networks and connections we have between us. So I'd like to talk about, as Richard said, some of the things we're launching today. Um, often people ask, what are, well, if, if the route to happiness isn't more wealth and more financial status in its own right, what are the real keys? So we are launching today some work we've done based on the latest scientific research called the 10 Keys to Happier Living. Um, none of them are rocket science. You, I think, find that many of them resonate with you, but they are things that consistently come up from the research. And of course, we all have our own path to happiness. That it's different for each of us, but um, we think these 10 things are very important. The first the first five on the left here that spell out the word great, and together these things spell 
great dream. The first five are things we can do in our day-to-day -day lives, like connecting in positive, loving relationships with people, um, giving, exercising, things that m many of us perhaps neglect sometimes, sometimes when we prioritise in our, in our busy lives. And those are based on something called the Five Ways to Wellbeing, a fantastic piece of research done by the New Economics Foundation and others. Um, and those are practical things we can do every day in our sort of outer lives. But, it, but those on a, in their own right aren't necessarily enough. And, and the second five that spell the word dream are actually, they're sort of slightly more long-term in nature. They're, they're the things that really kind of go on inside our heads as much as outside. They're the way we approach our lives. And so again, I'm unfortunately we don't have time to go through these all in detail, but to give a couple of examples, it's, it's, it's about our ability to bounce back for the inevitable bad times that happen in our lives. It's the resilience, it's our ability to cope and have strategies for dealing with tough times. Uh, and it's about, as Richard said, it's about having a sense of meaning, and that, that comes from very diff many different things. For some people, it's from their religious faith. For some people, it's from their role as a parent. From others, it's from doing a, a job that really makes a difference. Um, but that meaning and so many of these other things are, are crucial. So today, we're launching those. You'll find a lot more information about them on our website and in a series of other things that are related. Um, and, and, and I should say, so before we go, oh, I can't go back now, sorry. Um, that's that framework, these 10 keys to happier living, are not just relevant as they are for individuals. We believe they're relevant to teachers who work with children, or to, to managers that look after teams, to, to people who work in communities. They're things that we can all use, not only for ourselves, but in the way that we think about the people whose lives that we, we influence. Another thing we're doing today is launching a series of posters, which you'll see hopefully scattered around the room, and there's one to go with each of the ten keys. And it's, you know, what we're trying to do with this material is to take these messages out to different audiences in different ways. So we're hoping that the, the posters may inspire people to think about some of these points in different ways. And of course, the trick isn't for us to tell people the answers and say this is, this is a prescriptive how-to-be-happy list. It's about encouraging people to think and ask themselves questions and reflect on the things in their lives that are, that are most important. So please do look on our website and look at the posters and share those with others if, you, if you're inspired by them. Um, but as Richard said, you know, it needs, we need to go further than that. We need to give people practical actions they can take in their daily lives. So there are 50 actions on the website that, are, that anyone can take. They relate to relationships and parenting, communities, work, the workplace and more. And, and rather than just talking about them, why don't we, why don't we try them? Um, so I'd like to do one very quickly with you now, just to kind of get a sense of interactivity here. And many of these actions are very simple, and this is an example of one. So I'd like you to each, just for 20 seconds, think about three good things that happened to you yesterday. Think about your day yesterday, whether it was a good day or a bad day. Take a moment just to think about three things that were really good about yesterday, regardless of all the noise and the chaos and other things that may have happened. So just take a moment just to think about what was good yesterday. And so it seems like a, a, a bit of fun. And um, what's fascinating about this is it, it actually, um, evidence shows if we think about these things and write them down, it can have a really profound effect. So now what I'd like you to do, actually, instead of writing it down, we don't have pens, would you just take a moment to turn to the person next to you, ideally somebody you don't know, but it doesn't matter, and just spend 30 seconds telling them what, you know, one or more of the great things that happened to you yesterday. Let's, let's share some of, our, of the good things going on in our lives. <laughs> Wonderful to see such a spark of positive energy in the room. You've obviously all had wonderful days yesterday, from what I can see. Um, no, um, so, so again, it's a little bit of fun. It's something that's kind of engaging. But actually, what you find, and I was very cynical about this when I first heard about it, and there have been a lot of research done on this, but when you do this on a daily basis, it kind of reframes the way you think about your day. And, and you can do it with your children as well. I do this with my daughters, and they say some hilarious things about um, what, they, what they like most during the day. Um, so so uh, one practical example, there are many, many more on the website. Press the button, there we go. So, um, this is all brought to life by the website, which, as Richard said, is currently struggling because it's getting 4,000 concurrent hits thanks to the coverage today. Um, and it, it covers the 10 keys, it covers these actions we've talked about, but it brings in much more. It brings in the latest scientific evidence, it brings in news, and it also crucially gives you the chance to create groups and connect with other people who, who are passionate about these things. So please do look at the website, join if you haven't already, and, and spread the word to other people. Um, and I should say that we're, we're, we're supported in this endeavour by, as well as these, these wonderful people around the room, which I'll come on to in a moment, by a network of influential partner organisations that are out there doing wonderful things in different walks of life, from mental health to families to community engagement to a whole host of other things. Um, 
And they all care about happiness and well-being in some way, whether it's connection to the outdoor environment or to their passion for looking after children. Um, so thank you to all of our partner organisations who between them have a, have a network of well over 10 million members and people that they connect to for their daily activities. It's, it's fantastic to have your support and I hope that we can play a role in helping uh, enhance the, the work that you're already doing that relates to happiness and well-being. Um, what, what have we achieved so far? Well, it's very early days. Today's a launch day. It's not a, it's not a you know, we, we can't claim to have achieved anything quite yet. But we have, as Richard said, attracted an interest from around the world. This is just a quick map showing where our members, as of a month or two ago, were located. Actually, you know, the vast majority are in the UK, as you might expect. But what's fascinating is that this is starting to, uh, to resonate around the world, although it seems as though Russia may need a bit of encouragement on the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the happiness stakes. Um, uh, so, so, of course, we want to grow this, this, this membership, and, and actually what's, what's, what I'm so excited about today is that everyone around this room, we, what you can see in terms of the sh these showcases of projects that are going on, um, you know, the, the, the musicians that are going to play at the end of today, everyone here has linked to this movement in some way. So, in fact, it's not about the movement itself. We're not important. What's important is the amazing, inspiring things that are already going on and will continue to go on, we hope, in helping to spread happiness in our communities, in our schools, in our workplaces. So, please do engage with these fantastic things things that are here today and use them as inspiration for actions that you can take. Um, and finally, I'm going to do another action uh, that's on our list of 15. That's taking time to thank the people you're really grateful to. And uh, there are so many for, for getting us um, here today. I mean, I'd also like to echo my thanks to all the team of volunteers and helpers who've given amazingly generous amounts of time to make this happen. Uh, I'd also pick out Vanessa again for having done an incredible amount of work on the content uh, for getting this website developed. Thank you so much to everyone involved. Um, also, the events team who've put on this wonderful uh, show today, and in particular Ruhi, who's been working absolutely tirelessly to, to get this stuff uh, happening today. We've also been supported by some very generous agencies, uh, Public Zone in particular, who've developed the website and have been working night and day to make this work. Uh, and Fallon, who produced that lovely film that we saw at the start and have been incredibly generous with their support for us. So thank you to all of those, uh, and also to the, to the partner organisations, and crucially, I should mention the Young Foundation, which is our home, which is where we're based at the moment, and they've been incredibly generous and supportive to us in terms of getting this thing off the ground. So, so thank you to all of them. And on a personal note, I should say my mum and dad are here today. I think somewhere over there, hello. So I don't often get this chance, but I'd like to say thank you to you, because I literally, quite literally wouldn't be here uh, without you. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for all the support. And I think um, that you, certainly when you become a parent yourself, you realise quite how much you owe as a debt of gratitude to your own parents. So, uh, so thanks to them as well. Um, and, and that's it for me. I mean, we've got lots of visions, and I don't have enough time to tell you about it. But what we want to do is to really inspire and take these materials out to groups and help transform people's lives and communities. So thank you for being here. And uh, please, please find today inspiring and use it and take these messages out into your communities. Thanks very much.